CataractCoach.com, we're looking at a case where we're using the chopper to protect the capsule. Now, I do this a lot in a lot of my videos. I want to show you this case unedited. This is entire cataract surgery start to finish. It's only about five minutes. And so this is a patient who has a smaller anterior segment, a shallower anterior chamber, a hyperopic patient. We're going to put in a higher power lens. 27 diopter lens, so we can tell the patient's certainly hyperopic. Filling the anterior chamber here with viscoelastic, we try to get some deepening here of the anterior chamber. That helps dilate the pupil a little bit as well. We'll make our main incision. Now this eye is more prone to iris prolapse and things of that nature, basically due to the anatomy of the eye, so we want a nice incision like that. And we'll make our capsular axis. In an eye that it is smaller like this, we want to measure the capsular axis. And so in this case, we're going to make it basically as big as the dilation. So right up against that pupil margin. While that may seem like an overly large capsular axis, in fact, it's the right size. It's about five millimeters in diameter. This pupil dilation is only about five millimeters. So complete our capsular axis here. And I use this technique with the chopper to protect the capsular bag, primarily doing phaco emulsification. When we have the phaco probe in the eye and we don't want the posterior capsule to come forward with any fluidic movements. You know, the entire working volume of space that we're in, in the anterior chamber, and even within the posterior chamber, is just a few drops of fluid. So it's very small, certainly less than a cc, less than usually a quarter of a cc. So that's maybe eight drops of fluid. So we have a very small space within which we're working. And in this side, it's even smaller because of the anatomy. So we're going to buzz into the phaco probe here, put the chopper in place around the equator, and we can chop and get two halves of the nucleus. We fully separate the two halves, and we can then bring these out of the capsular bag and emulsify them. Now, notice how I use the chopper to hold one piece of the nucleus, one hemi-nucleus, in the bag and out of the way to create more of a gap, which allows me to bring that second hemi-nucleus up. So half is removed, here's the second half coming up. And now I don't need more chopping, so the chopper initially pushes the piece in front of the probe, and now the back side of the chopper, the smooth back side, not the tip, is against the posterior capsule. And you'll see in this small line that posterior capsule will come up and touch the back end right there of the chopper. So it was very important that we use the chopper to help block the posterior caps from coming forward. So we block it. It's not able to touch the phaco tip. As you know, if it touches the metal phaco tip, it can certainly break. So we're very careful about that. Now with cortex removal, we have a few things to our advantage. Number one, the tip is a polymer or plastic. So there's no metal tip to touch the posterior capsule. Another thing is that the port on the IA probe is very small, the aspiration port, whereas the infusion is the same size of the side ports compared to FACO. So the fluidics are in our balance. During IA, there's a lot more inflow of fluid and a lot less outflow. During FACO, there's a lot more outflow, so it doesn't balance quite as well. We're now going to place our IOL in the capsule bag. This is a single piece acrylic lens. And we'll take it and put it right there inside the eye, underneath the nasal rexus, advance it. We'll use our chopper to carefully go in here and dial the entire lens into the capsule bag. And we'll ensure that both haptics open. Now you can tell how small the eye is. That's a six millimeter optic, and it looks positively huge inside this eye. So we'll finish up the case here, going behind the eye well to remove viscoelastic. So again, the most uh, risky part of the surgery in terms of having the posterior capsule come forward is during phaco emulsification. When we have the metal phaco tip inside the eye and we're using ultrasonic energy to break up the nucleus, this is where we have to be careful and make sure the posterior capsule avoids touching the phaco tip. When we take out half the nucleus and half is in the bag still, that second half weighs down the bag. It's only when we remove the last bit of nucleus where nothing is left to hold the caps or bag in position. That's when we really want to use the backside, the smooth backside of our chopper 
as a barrier just to make sure the posterior capsule doesn't come forward and contact the phacotip. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much.